So welcome to uh, uh, this video where we are discussing the Vogel's approximation method. This is our third method or the method that, uh, our third method of uh, solving a transportation problem. Uh, this method is also known as uh, the penalty method. We can call it the VAM, which is the abbreviation of the Vogel's approximation method. So basically this method uh, involves the use of penalties. And usually penalties are computed from the cost matrix. So the penalties will be computed from these values, from the values in that area. And a penalty is the difference between the smallest number in a given row and the second smallest number in the same same row. So just pick the, the two small, the, the smallest numbers, the two smallest numbers, then you get the difference. The positive difference is the penalty. So that's the starting point. Then you realize that we are combining the use of penalties and also the least cost cell. So we saw that the use of the least cost cell method gives very efficient solutions. So you want to combine the use of penalties and also the use of the least cost cells. So usually when you're given a problem, like this, uh, you have already checked that this problem is balanced. So there's no, there's no worry. So you need to have penalties. Huh? So these are the raw penalties. And then here you have the column penalties. The column penalties. Huh? So we can uh, try and have them in a systematic way. Okay, so that's the first set of penalties. So we, we check in row one. The penalty in row one is the difference between the smallest number and the second smallest number. So it's a difference between four and two, and the difference is two. So the penalty in that row is two. We do the same in row two, where the smallest number is a one followed by a three. So the penalty there is a two. In the third row, uh, the penalty is, uh, the smallest number is four, followed by a five. So the penalty here is a one. We do that for, this is a two. Yeah? So that means the penalty is a one. We do the same for the column. So in column one, the penalty is a uh, two minus one, which is one. Here, the penalty is, the smallest number here is a three, followed by a four, so the penalty is one. Here, the smallest number is a one, and the penalty is, uh, sorry, and the, followed by a two, and the penalty is a one. So now we have both row and column penalties. So once you compute the penalties, you identify the largest penalty, okay? So in our case, the largest penalty is uh, two and there are two of them. Huh? So there's a tie. So usually you break tie randomly. So assume we pick the second one. So if we consider this as our highest penalty, we notice that it is in row two. So in row two, you identify the cell with the least cost. And this is the cell with the least cost. So that is the cell you are going to allocate to. So as I mentioned earlier, the difference between the methods is how you determine where to allocate. In the Northwest corner, we are working with the, north, the most Northwest corner cell. In the least cost method, we are working with the cell with the least cost. So here, we first get the penalties, we identify either a row or the column with the highest penalty, then within that row or column, we identify the cell with the least cost. And that's where we allocate first. So we allocate to this cell first. And then here we're going to allocate either eight or 18. And we always allocate the smaller of the two. So here we're going to allocate eight. Here you take away eight, you get zero. Here you take away eight, you remain with 10. Then you delete any row or any column which has been satisfied. So in this case, you're going to delete this one. 
because it, the demand has been satisfied there. And the supply has been ex, uh, uh, depleted. Then we revise the row and column penalties. So I'm going to create another row here, another space here to write the second generation of penalties. So you realize that some of the penalties will change, others will not change, but to be safe, just revise all of them. So in the first row, the penalties have not changed. So we're going to have a two there. We still have a two. These are two, uh, four minus a two. In the second row, we have deleted. So we go to the next row. Here, there's no change. Here, there's no change. We come to the columns. That's why you might find changes because we, we have interfered with the rows. Uh, because we have interfered with actually all the columns. Uh, so here, uh, the minimum and deleted cost is one, followed by a two. So this the penalty has not changed there. So here, the smallest and deleted value is a four, followed by a six. So the difference between those two is a two. Here, the smallest and deleted cost is a two, followed by a four. That gives us a difference of two. Okay, so we have a new set of penalties. So uh, we need to, because uh, the highest penalty is two and is tied between row one, column two and column one, we break the tie randomly. Okay, we break the tie randomly. So we allocate to any one of them randomly. So let's pick, uh, we can pick which one? We can pick column three. We could as well have picked this one or even this one, but now we have to work, we have to choose one. So I'll choose one and uh, somehow I'll choose the one with the, which contains the least cost. Okay, so I decide to choose this one because it has the least cost. Okay, so here I'm either going to assign 10 or 14. So because I assign the minimum of the two, here I say 10. And here I allocate. I subtract 10 to get a four. And then here, once I subtract this, I get a zero. Then I delete the row or column, which has been satisfied. So I delete like that. Then I revise my penalties. I revise my penalties. So I'm going to have another set of penalties. Okay. So, so row one, the smallest number is two followed by a seven because I've already canceled the, the row, the column containing uh, four. So here my penalty is five. My penalty is five. Then in the third row, the smallest number is four followed by a five. So the penalty is a one. In the next row, I have a one and a six, so my penalty there is five. In my first column, the smallest number is a one, uh, followed by a two, so I still have one. Uh, in my second column, my smallest number is a four, followed by a six, so this one has not changed. So I have, the penalties are one, two, five, and five, one, and five. Five is tied. So I need to choose one of them at random, but deliberately I'll choose the one that will give me the least cost. So I'll prefer this one than this one. Okay. So I assign to this cell. So how much do we transport to that cell? Either we transport four, we transport seven. So here we put a four. We take away four, get zero, take away four, get a three. You get a three. Then you delete any row or column which has been satisfied. In this case, we're going to delete this guy. We delete that. Then we revise our row and column penalty we revise our row and column penalties. So we have another generation of penalties there. So in uh, row one, 
the penalty still remains five. Row two is canceled, draw three. Our penalty remains one. Uh, three is canceled. Oh, the four is canceled, sorry. So we are okay there. Then uh, the columns uh, in column one, I have a two and a five. That gives me a three as the penalty. Here I have a seven and a four. That gives me another three and that's all. Okay, so my penalties are five, one, three and three. So I give priority to this one. So in this row, I locate where the cost is minimum. So where do I locate there? Either a three or a five. So here I put a three. And then this goes to zero and this goes. To... Then I delete this column because we have satisfied its requirement. So I did. So now I'm only remaining with this cell. Let me highlight the cells that are remaining. I don't think I need to compute any penalties. I'm remaining with this cell. And uh, which other cell? And this cell. All the other cells have been deleted. All the other cells have been deleted. So I can just conclude and say, I'm going to allocate there. And I'm also going to allocate there. So if I start with the one on top, how many can I allocate here? I either allocate a five, no, a two or a nine. So here, if I put a two here, if I put a two here, then this will go to zero. Then this will go to seven. Then that means in the other in the remaining cell here, I either put this seven or this seven. So this will be definitely a seven will satisfy everything, which will satisfy everything. That, then I can copy this solution and paste it somewhere where it's a bit clear. Then we can look at the available solutions. So here is the solution according to the Vogel's approximation method, uh, where you can confirm that the row and column requirements have been satisfied. You do the totals and these are the solutions. Uh, elsewhere it's zero. Whatever is not appearing here is zero. And the total cost of transportation, according to this method is 80, which is lower than what we observed using the other methods. So you observe that, and this will be true all the time, is that the Vogel's approximation method will always give you the best solution, but that solution may not be optimal. So this doesn't mean that 80 is the optimal solution. You need to check whether the solution is optimal using either the modified distribution method or the uh, or the stepping stone method, which is uh, what we're going to discuss next.